Now that we have obtained estimators of the variances and standard errors of the beta parameters in the simple linear regression model, calculated the studentized versions of those estimators, and determined their sampling distributions, we have everything we need to develop inference procedures for the beta parameters. In this video, we look at procedures for testing hypotheses about the slope coefficient and also about the intercept. So here's an outline of what we'll be looking at in this lecture. We'll start off by looking at three types of hypothesis tests involving beta 1. We'll state the null and alternative hypotheses for each of these three kinds of tests. We'll give the test statistic to use. We'll then specify the rejection criterion for each of the three types of tests. We'll also give a p-value formula for each of the three kinds of tests. And then we'll do the same thing for hypothesis test involving beta zero. So let's start off by looking at hypothesis tests involving beta one. Using the t-test, we will have three types of hypothesis tests involving beta one that will be available. The first is called a two-tailed test. The null hypothesis of this test is that beta one is equal to some specified value, which we're denoting here by beta 1 star, against the alternative hypothesis that says that beta 1 is not equal to that specified value. The second test is called a left-tailed test. The null hypothesis states that beta 1 is greater than or equal to some specified value, beta 1 star, and the alternative, which is the opposite of the null, states that beta 1 is less than beta 1 star. And then finally, we have what's called a right-tailed test. The null hypothesis for this test says that beta 1 is less than or equal to some specified value, beta 1 star, against the alternative hypothesis, which says that beta 1 is greater than beta 1 star. Now remember that whenever you're setting up hypothesis test, you put what you're wanting to show in the alternative. So if it's our purpose to uh, try to show that uh, the slope coefficient is different than some value, then uh, that would be uh, the alternative hypothesis that beta one is not equal to uh, whatever that value happens to be. And so that would be a two-tailed test. If our goal is to try to show that the slope coefficient is less than a particular value, then we would use a left-tailed test. And if our purpose is to try to show that beta one is greater than some value, then we would use a right-tailed test. Now, these three tests as shown here are labeled A, B, and C, and we will use those letters to uh, identify uh, the various particulars for these tests on subsequent slides. Now, finally, also note that the hypothesized value beta 1, 0 uh, can be 0, and, and oftentimes it will be, but it doesn't have to be. It depends on the particular uh, situation or application uh, that we are involved in. In some cases, all we want to do is to check to see if there is a linear relationship uh, between the response and the explanatory variable. And so in that case, the appropriate value for beta 1 star would be 0. On the other hand, it may be of interest to try to show that uh, beta 1 is uh, greater than a particular value, right? Or uh, perhaps uh, less than a particular value uh, where those values are different than zero. So the bottom line here is that this is a very flexible uh, testing situation or testing procedure uh, because we can put any appropriate value for beta 1 star uh, in these hypotheses. Now, the test statistic for uh, each of these tests will be the studentized test statistic, which we will uh, denote by tcalc. And the expression for tcalc is beta 1 hat minus the hypothesized value, beta 1 star, divided by the estimated standard error of beta 1 hat. And that Estimated standard error is equal to the square root of sigma hat squared divided by S sub xx. Now, under the assumption of normality of uh, beta 1 hat, 
The following rejection criteria provide hypothesis tests with a significance level of alpha. And so if we are performing a two-tailed test, hypothesis test A, then we are to reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic t calc is either less than uh, negative t sub alpha over 2 comma n minus 2, or if t calc is greater than positive t sub alpha over 2 comma n minus 2. If we are performing a left-tailed test, hypothesis test B, then we will reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic t calc is less than negative t sub alpha comma n minus 2. And finally, if we're performing a right-tailed test, so hypothesis test C, then we will reject the null hypothesis if t calc, our test statistic, is greater than positive t sub alpha comma n minus 2. Now, t sub p comma n minus 2 is the upper pth percentage point of students' t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. And so applying that to these three rejection criteria, t sub alpha over 2 comma n, comma n minus 2 is the upper alpha over 2 percentage point of students' t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. t sub alpha comma n minus 2 is the upper alpha percentage point of the t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Next, let's look at formulas for calculating p-values. So again, under the assumption of normality of the estimator beta 1 hat, the following formulas give the p-value for each of the three types of hypothesis tests. And so for a two-tailed test, the p-value is given by two times the probability that a t-random variable with n minus 2 degrees of freedom is greater than or equal to the absolute value of our test statistic, t calc. For the left-tailed test, the p-value is given by the probability that a t-random variable, again with n minus 2 degrees of freedom, is less than or equal to the observed value of t calc. Notice that we're not taking the absolute value on that one. And then finally, for a right-tailed test, the p-value is given by the probability that a t-random variable with n minus 2 degrees of freedom is greater than or equal to the observed value of t calc. So again, t sub n minus 2 is a t-random variable with n minus 2 degrees of freedom, and lowercase t calc is the observed value of our test statistic. Now, how do we use p-values in deciding whether to reject the null hypothesis or not? Well, as always, regardless of the type of hypothesis being tested, that is, whether it's a two-tailed test, a left-tailed test, or a right-tailed test, when using the p-value to uh, determine whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. The rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level alpha that is being used for the test. That is, as you can see here, reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. All right, next let's look at hypothesis test involving beta zero. So again, using the t-test, we have three types of hypothesis tests that we can perform involving beta zero. We have a two-tailed test, a left-tailed test, and a right-tailed test, just like we had for tests involving beta one. Again, note that beta zero star the hypothesized value of beta zero can be zero, but it certainly does not have to be. The studentized test statistic will also be used for this test. It's denoted t calc, and it's equal to beta hat zero minus beta zero star divided by the estimated standard error of beta hat zero. And so that is uh, 
beta zero hat minus beta zero star divided by the square root of sigma hat squared times the sum of the squared x values divided by n times s of x x. Under the assumption of normality of the estimator beta zero hat, the following rejection criteria provide hypothesis tests with a significance level of alpha. So again, if we're going to perform a two-tailed test, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic t calc is either really small or really big. How small does it have to be? Well, if t calc is less than negative t sub alpha over 2 comma n minus 2, we'll reject. Or if it's greater than positive t sub alpha over 2 comma n minus 2, we would reject in that situation as well. If we're performing a left-tailed test, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic t calc is less than negative t sub alpha comma n minus 2. And if we're performing a right-tailed test, we're going to reject the null hypothesis if t calc is greater than positive t sub alpha comma n minus 2. So you see that when we uh, use a studentized test statistic and express the rejection criteria uh, in terms of uh, that test statistic, then the rejection criteria for tests involving beta 0 uh, are the same as the rejection criteria uh, for testing hypotheses about beta 1. In addition, the p-value formulas are the same as they were for uh, tests involving beta 1, and so I'm not going to uh, read those again, but you can see those here. And then finally, uh, the rejection criteria in terms of p-values is the same uh, as it always is. We're going to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, which is the significance level that we have chosen to use for the test. So that's all for this lecture video. I'll see you in the next lecture video.